no man ever steps in the same river twice. For it's not the same river, and he's not the same man. When the Greek philosopher Heraclitus said, you cannot step into the same river twice, he meant that at any given time, you are changing, as well as the river is changing. So returning to the very first moment of that version of you, standing on that version of the river is impossible. It's not a very complex idea, but it has a lot of implications. For what that means is about your identity and your place in the universe. I've always loved the physics of the unknown, and that's part of why I've always loved to watch TED Talks. So I've been watching TED Talks since I was a kid. In order to learn more about the world around me, from the everyday society, and from the biggest aspects to the smallest aspects of the known world. Some TED Talks are so great that I want to watch them again and again, but there's a problem. I can never watch them for the very first time. You'd ask me why. Because I have changed with time, I've grown with time, as well as my perspective has changed. So there's a picture I'd like to show you. It's a picture of a three-year-old Syrian refugee whose body washed up on the shore of Turkey. And this picture was from the late 2015. So when I saw this picture for the very first time, I was shocked. I was in great fear. You'd ask me why, even though I don't know who he was. Because I was placing myself in his shoes. I was placing my father in his father's shoes and experiencing what they went through. But with time, people get over things. And with time, people get immune to some kind of pains. And that's exactly what happened to me. When I watch this picture again, after two and a half years, I don't have that initial shock that I had for the very first time. Because, as I said before, I've changed, and I watched this picture again and again. Even now, I cannot come back to the same position where I started my TED Talk, because the stage and I have both changed with time. Yes, the stage did change. It did change. It did, it did age in a few seconds. And the difference is very infinitesimal. And that's where it gets very interesting. Neither I nor the stage were the same as we were a few seconds ago. But you might ask me that we are in the same place relative to the Earth, but what about our position in the universe? We all had that starry night where we looked up in the sky and stared at the stars and we thought, where's my position in the universe? And we all conceded with one conclusion, and that is we're tiny, even relative to our galaxy, microscopically tiny. So I'm not talking about how small we are in comparison to the universe. I'm talking about our physical location. So for example, my physical location right now is I'm in the assembly hall in Waterford Kaba in Babane, in Swaziland. Just like that, our location in the universe. So you might ask me that even though we're so small in comparison to the universe, why should we even think about where we are? Because we live in it. In one way or another, we're being affected by daily intangible things happening 10 billion light years away from us, just like a chain reaction. So what is a chain reaction? A chain reaction is when something affects the other thing and the other thing affects the other thing and keeps on happening. Just like that, that first thing that starts the reaction does not directly affect the other ones. It indirectly affects it. So we can say that our actions in the universe are a chain reaction. For example, so when I'm using a lot of plastics and I'm throwing it here and there and somehow it's ending up in the ocean. I'm not killing the marine life directly, but my actions are. It's being passed on from one place to another, and it's ending up there. And indirectly, I'm affecting the marine life. So when I look at this picture of the bus, so I actually think about one of the, one of, one, something that happened to me a while ago when I came here, before I came here. So one night, I put my alarm for about 6 o'clock in the morning. But the next day, I woke up at 7.30 because my phone was on silent and the alarm did not go off. 
I was in great, I was panicking. I was panicking and shivering because it was the last day of my exam and I had to take the school bus and I was late. So what I did is I got off my bed, went to the bathroom, took a shower and brushed my teeth in a minute. It's very unhygienic. And then what I did is I went to the kitchen, took a bowl, gulped in cereal and milk as fast as I can. And then I ran, ran to the end of my street and then I see the bus. But the bus is moving towards school and I'm left behind. So at that time, I did not think about my exam. The only thing, the only thought I thought was, the moment I step in my, inside my house, my mother is killing me. So I was wishing at that time that, oh, what, if, what if I could go back in time and put my phone not in silent and just get on the bus and run away from my potential angry mother. So let's get back to our position in the universe. So before that, I would like to talk about time. Time is such a broad concept. As we are part of this universe, we are greatly dependent on time. And time is greatly independent of anything. N time will never stop for me, not for you, and not for anything until this universe exists. Time only flows in one direction. And it will keep on flowing in one direction, and that is forwards and never backwards. So if you spill milk, you can't unspill it. Even, even if you think how old or young you are in spirit, your body will mark its age every year past its birth. So in a, so way, in a way, we're literally moving linearly in the literal same speed towards infinity. So yes, as I said before, let's go back to our position in the universe. In, um, on, on Earth, we are moving, and the Earth is also moving. But just like time, our Earth moves in one direction and it can never change its direction. For example, the Earth cannot change its spin on its axis. But even though it comes back to the same position every year relative to the sun, our sun and all the planets orbiting it also moves through space. So as a fact, our solar system moves 70,000 kilometers every hour. So according to my calculations, it's 19.4 kilometers every second. This means that it's we're, for example, me, I'm actually running a marathon through space every three seconds. It's a very cool thing to boast about with your friends. <laughs> so the space, the universe, they have no borders. It's huge. Nothing can stop anything to move in any direction. It's expanding, it's changing, and shifting. For instance, this is the map of Bangladesh and India. And as I'm a Bangladeshi, I'm walking from Bangladesh to India with my passport, but without a visa. So the very first moment I go to the border, the border controls ask me about my visa. I hand him my passport, but due to my inability to show my visa, I'm denied access, which means I can't enter India. But in the universe, it's totally the opposite. There are no borders no lines, no custom officers to stop anything to hurdle relentlessly on. Our universe is 93 billion light years across. Wait, that's an at least figure. This means it can be 100 billion light years. It can also be a trillion light years, but we don't know. We might never know because the universe might just be infinite. So let's take both the concepts. The concept of my position in the universe and the concept of time itself. As I said before, I'm moving, the Earth is moving, our solar system is moving, and as well as our galaxy, which makes a tiny part of the universe. Everything that is massive relative to me and everything that is cosmically tiny to the universe is in motion and it's never coming back to its position. So both time and I are moving towards one destiny, which is towards infinity. So I could say that I'm moving around the stage, I'm talking to you, it's happening. And it's being recorded in this time, and it's being passed on. So, so what's happening right now, now, and now, is the recording. And the time is the universe as it's making its way towards infinity. 
So the same way that the stage and I cannot come back to the same position, just like that, this recording can never be rewritten. This means that this recording cannot be stopped or played again, which means reliving the past must just, must, might not just be possible because this recording cannot be stopped or played. Because it only exists in a frenetic, non-replicable motion, and it's never coming back. So we could say that this time and I are not constant. Just like Einstein's theory of relativity. It states that time and space and things as small as us, things as small as ants, are not constant. Even though we think that due to our day-to-day -day interactions, due to what we're doing, we think that we're so consistent, but beautifully and inarguably, we're inconsistent. We're moving through life and space as we keep. And this universe is continuing to record, but never reviewing time. We're practicing the laws of the universe in an unknowing way. Just like the time the universe started, and it started to grow and grow and grow. Just like that, one day I was born, and I started to grow and learn. But I can never go back to the position, to the moment when I was born. Just like that, this universe can never restart again. So I have a very cliche advice for you guys. It's very cliche, and it's not only for you guys, it's also for myself. And that is to live every moment of your life as if you'll never live it again. And to say anything you want to say to anyone you want to, because you and your actions, your recording is in an unstoppable path towards infinity. This is Fahan Masud Ahmed for Bangladesh, and thank you for giving me your time and space today.